This is a sacred gathering this morning as on this Palm Sunday, we remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. This is the beginning of Holy Week, amen? This is the beginning of Holy Week. So we need to fix our eyes on the one who humbly rolled into the city on a donkey. On a donkey, amen? As we come together, let us open our hearts this morning to the presence of the Holy Spirit as we begin our worship experience. Let us remember the path to the cross is one of sacrifice. It's the one of love, but it's the one of the ultimate victory that will lead and for our salvation. Amen. Let us lift our voices today in praises and, and thanksgiving. And we want our worship experience to be pleasing in God's sight. Amen. Yeah. To be pleasing in God's sight, we want our hearts to be open today to receive. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Because I was glad when they said unto me, let us, united as one in our faith, go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to begin with a praise and worship selection. We invite you to sing along. We're going to do a sing along if you know the song and desire to sing. We're so happy to have our men chorus here this morning. Amen. And we thank God for each of you and your presence here this morning. And we thank those who are with us in virtual land. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. of faith and let us together say in whom do we believe I believe
push you back. Every day he's pushing you there. He has set me to heaven. He has set me at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the restoration of Amen. You may be seated. Um, our own Reverend Langford will come and do the invocation, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Amen. And then Brother Keith Bell will do the Old and New Testament. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, St. Luke. How y'all doing this morning? Come on, let's give God praise in this house. Two or three, two or three. Hey, you guys are doing great. <laughs> Just before I pray, I want to say this. I, uh, we have noonday prayer with the callers sometimes. And that day, I pray for the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. And then I get a call a couple of days ago that one of my great grandson had a fourth degree burn. And I have to stand before y'all and tell you, I was so angry. I didn't say anything verbally, but my thoughts was messed up. You know what I mean? I'm just being, standing before you to tell the truth. I was just so angry. So the, you know, the book of James says, be swift to hear, but slow to speak. Because you're angry, think twice before you speak once. And so, you know, I was just, it's just so devastating. What I'm trying to say is, this enemy, y'all, is coming after our children, and we got to wake up and do warfare in the spirit for our kids. For our kids. This world is messed up. So as I go into the prayer, I'm going to pray, y'all keep my great-grandson lifted up. His name is Jaden, seven years old, fourth-degree burn. So, Father, as I pray this morning, God, most of all, God, I ask you for forgiveness just for what I thought and what I felt, God. God, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for I know it is the power of Jesus Christ unto everyone that believe it. Father, I pray for everyone this morning, God, who's standing in your stead, God. God, somebody needs you this morning, and, and, and perhaps they don't know how to call you. So, God, we lift them up to you on every side. Father, I want to begin by saying this morning, how are you this morning, Jesus? Pray for us, God, that our, our faith fail us not. God, I pray for Sister Betty Cox, who went to the hospital again, Lord. God, I ask you right now just to lay your hands upon her, God, right where she lay, God. God, I ask you right now to touch her body, God. God, I ask you for immediately re uh, recovery, oh God. God, I ask you right now, I pray for Jeffrey Stinson, who's now on the list, God. God, we give you praise because he's now on the list, God. God, I pray his strength right where he's at, God. God, knowing that you're able, God, to bring him to us, God. God, we know you have all power. And God, I want to pray for Miss Bowers who had to go funeralize her brother down there. God, I'm praying her strength right now, God. Because it's never easy to lose a loved one. But we understand everybody in this room has a destiny or to say a date with death. And who's to say when or why or how come or what way? Only you know, Lord. So God, with that said, I want to pray for our entire body right here. St. Luke, my immediately family, God. I'm, I'm praying for St. Luke. God, I'm lifting up Sherry Reed right now, God. I'm praying her strength right now, her family strength and her recent loss, oh God. God, I lift up my mother to you right now, God. God, I lift up our pastor, and I lift up the, the first lady who's not behind him, but who's beside him, oh God. God, I pray they strength on every side. Now, God, I'm turning toward our children, God. I'm turning towards our grandchildren right now, God. 
I'm turning to our great grandchildren, God. Our children that's in, in college right now, God, to embark on, on this world on today, God. God, if there's ever a time that we need you, just the songwriter said, we need you now. I don't need you another hour from now, but right now, God. We need you now, God. And as we stand in the gaps for our children, when we send them off to school, let us pray for them, God. Cover that bus driver, God. Cover the school, God. We plead the blood of Jesus right now over our children right now, God. God, I pray for every mother's daughter right now, God. I pray for that daughter who, who's not listening to that mother. I, I pray for that son who, who's not listening to that father, God. We lift them up to you. God, I see so much mental health in these young peoples out here on the street. God, I lay them at your feet right now, God. You said, let our petition be known. So, God, we bring it to you. Every prayer, God, that I just pray, God. God, I pray every strength, every broken heart right now, every bowed down head right now, God, we ask that you lift it up, oh God. God, we pray they strengthen the hearts of every people that's standing in your stead today, God, who's proclaiming the name of Christ, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now will you recite the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, church. That was an awesome prayer by Brother Langford, Reverend Langford, excuse me. This morning I'm reading the Old Testaments and New Testaments. The Old Testaments is coming from Psalms 118, and I'm reading verses 1 through 2, and then I jump to verse 19 through 29. And the scripture reads, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done this. The Lord has done it in this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in his hands, joined in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Amen. Stand for the glory, please.
now for the New Testament reading. If you would turn to Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. That's Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. As they approached Jerusalem, and they came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter, you will find a coat tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a coat outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some of the people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that coat? They answered that Jesus, they answered as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the coat to Jesus and they threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. That was God's word for God's people. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. It's offering time ask the ushers to come and as they come we think about this time where we pause to thank God for the privilege of giving back the privilege of giving back a portion of what he has given to us amen We have six ways to give so those who want to give by our cash app or other ways of giving, please do so at this time.
shall we give them thee? brought me from. Amen. Amen. I tell you, today is just a great day. You know, someone who was not, that was here last year is not here today. And so we thank God. We thank him for his grace and we thank him for his mercy and we give him all the praise, all the praise, because look where he brought us from. Amen. 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 It's that special time for our announcements. First, we want to thank the uh, group responsible for the palm leaves. Amen? Amen. 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 As we celebrate today. Amen. The announcements, please. Here are your happenings at the Luke. Happy Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week commemorating Jesus Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Church school meeting today following the hymn of preparation. All singers and music lovers are invited to participate in our 2024 Resurrection Choir on Easter Sunday. Join us for our last two spirit-filled rehearsals on Thursday evening at 6.30 and Saturday at noon. Good Friday service, sponsored by the General Missionary Society, will be held virtually and in person on Friday, March 29th at noon. Our guest speaker will be Rev. Katoya Jackson, pastor at Andrews Tabernacle CME Church. Easter program will be Sunday, March 31st at the 10 a.m. morning worship service. Join presiding prelate Marvin Frank Thomas Sr. for the First Episcopal District Spring Gathering, April 4th through the 6th. The St. Luke CME family is praying for and with you. Have a great week. Keep healthy and stay safe. Thank you. We've heard our announcements. Let's take heed to them. Let us remember our uh, service on Friday, our Good Friday service. Amen. Amen. Thank you, baby. Now, do we have any visitors here with us today? We ask that you stand. Well, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Reverend Dr. Ronald Poe to come now with pastoral remarks. But I'm just so thankful that God let me see another day. Come on, y'all. Another day. Somebody say another day. We thank God that he has allowed us to see another day. You did not deserve it, nor did you earn it. But by the grace of God, I'm able to see another Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord. It was on this time over 2,000 years ago that God, through his son Jesus Christ, set his face, set his face to go into Jerusalem and face death and all types of evil for you and for me. Praise the Lord. I tell you now, every once in a while, you need to set your face. Somebody says, set my face. Set my face means that I'm determined that I'm going to go on a little while longer. And uh, as a child of God, you've got to be able to set your face. And Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem and went in on this day over 2,000 years ago. 
came in so that he could sacrifice his life for you and for me. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God praise for the sacrifice. Yeah. And I want to remind you that this coming Friday at noon, and we will have food, by the way, and I'm looking forward to it. whatever someone, I, someone is going to prepare some food, not me. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to eating the food that someone is going to prepare this, this coming Friday at 12 noon right here in person and virtual. And then uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock, the Southeast District will host the, the Good Friday service at 7 o'clock. And that will be virtual, all virtual. So you can jump on using the ID number and the passcode or just the link itself and be part of that great celebration. And we look forward to it. We look forward to it as we celebrate uh, Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. Praise the Lord. I want to thank all of you for what you do for this church. Thank you for the Easter egg hunt on yesterday. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we had mamas and daddies and sisters and brothers out yesterday for the Easter egg hunt. And oh, what a time. Somebody said, oh, what a time. Oh, what a time we had with the children. And I said to someone, our children's ministry is one of the best ministries that we have in the church. Come on, let's give God some praise for the ministry of our children here in the church. And then last night, oh, what a great time. We experienced heaven in here last night. When new, 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 uh, what's the name of that group? What's that again? New Spirit and Friend. Yay. In here last night, and what a, what a great time we had in here last night. Come on, let's give God some praise for New Spirit and Friend. Yeah, they could have gone anywhere they wanted to go, but they came here. And what a great time we had. And we thank God for all that God does for us, and we give him glory and praise. Now, i tell you something. I told Dr. Julie Stenson Reynolds this earlier today. It doesn't take much to motivate me. Kathleen Byers came up to me earlier this morning and said, I got something for you. She gave me a whole handful of uh, instruments that I'll be using in service. And I just want to say thank you, Kathleen, because you, you didn't have to help me. But I thank God for her. And they are tailor-made, by the way. I thank you, Kathleen, for helping me. And then, you know, whenever, whenever I'm in the kitchen or around, uh, Dr. Julie Stinson Reynolds is always there to give me a drink of water or to give me something to drink or to give me some snacks just to help my body. You know, she's a, she's, she ministry, she, she carried out a ministry to the body. She's a, she's a medical doctor. Her ministry is to the body and to the mind. But it's not just to the body and the mind. She will minister to your soul. Amen. Yeah. And, I pre and I appreciate her just being kind to me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, just being kind. Give me a glass of water, or a glass of juice, or some snacks. I appreciate her. And any little thing that you do for me, I want you to know I appreciate it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Dr. Julie Stenson Reynolds to come in and read the Sermonic text because she reads so well. She reads so well. Amen. And she put passion and emphasis there in the reading, and I thank her for that. So I'm going to ask her to come and read the Sermonic text, and I'm going to get back here with the men. Yeah. yeah, get back here with the men. You see how well we are dressed today? Oh, yeah these men and we invite you to join us too but I'm going to get back here and sing with the men and uh, brother 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 Keith been working with us he's working with us too I tell you he's he's helping us and and uh, sister Oguno we thank them come on let's give God praise for brother Keith 
and Sister Oguno, because, you know, working, working, working with us is not all that easy sometimes. But they keep on working with us. Keep on working with us. I'm going back here now. Amen. Before I read the sermon, um, Reverend Poe, did you know that the Aguno family is a legend? They are two second generation Fist Jubilee singers that we have in our presence. So I wanted to stop and acknowledge it. This is Women's History Month. So we thank you. My daughter has been telling me to do something. I have not done it. So thank you. I will do you at least publicly. Um, she saw the documentary of you and her big sister, Kristen, and was so excited to see Kristen Oguno. And of course, you were mentioned as her mother <laughs> with no name. Um, but Ginger Oguno and Kristen Oguno are second generations, first and second, of Fist Jubilee singers who are a member of this body. Yay! So we thank you for sharing your talents, your gifts with us. That is your women's history moment. Mm. <laughs> Philippians 2, starting at verse 1 down to 11. Philippians 2, starting at verse 1 down to 11. Philippians 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one spirit and in one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that the na at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thanks be to God. That's Philippians 2, 1 through 11. Amen.
Let the church say amen. I believe uh, our children are ready now for church school. We would ask our children to leave at this time for church school. Praise the Lord. came by today to talk with you for just a little while from the subject let the man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus let the church say amen. amen. Say that with me. Let the man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, is regarded by some as a hymn of the early church. In fact, they go so far to say that the way that the, the stanzas and the verses are arranged is nothing but a hymn. But I came by on this Sunday morning to say to you, let the man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Can I get a witness right there? Let this man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. It is all too easy for us to read the description of Jesus and admire it from a distance. A lot of us will say, I love the Lord, but you want to do it at a distance. Can I get a witness right there? But God wants us to be awed and to see it as something that we must enter into and imitate. Let church say amen. Let this man means that it is something that we have a choice about. To be a Christian means to be like Jesus. Can I get a witness right there? Somebody said, be like Jesus. Not like you want to be, but be like Jesus. Remember also that this man is something granted to us by God. In 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, We have the mind of Christ, but let this man uh, shows us that it is also something we must choose to walk in. I must decide to be like Jesus because I want to be like Jesus. Somebody said, praise the Lord. In verse 6, A, it tells us that Jesus was in the form of God. Who being in the form of God, this describes Jesus' pre-incarnate 
existence. We, we must re be reminded, we must remind ourselves that Jesus did not begin his existence in a manger in Bethlehem. Can I get a witness right there? But he is eternal. Yeah, before he came into the world, he already existed. Can I get a witness right there? Paul, by the use of the Greek word translated being, informs his Greek readers that our Lord's possession of the divine essence did not cease to be a fact when he came to earth and assumed a human form. Get this, if you will. He made the world and turned right around and got inside of the very world that he made. Right. Oh, that's mind-boggling. Oh, that's mind-boggling. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, like a mama giving birth to a child and then turns around and gets inside of the very child that she gave birth to. But Jesus, being God, who made everything that is made, turned around and got inside of the very world that he made. And he did it not because he had to, but he did it because he needed to. Somebody said, tell me some more. Yeah. And being God, he didn't have to obey anyone. But verse 6b said, tells us that Jesus did not cling to the privileges of being deity. Did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. The ancient Greek in this phrase had, has the idea of, the, of something being grasped or clung to. Jesus did not cling to the prerogatives or privileges of deity. And it wasn't that Jesus was trying to achieve equality with the Father because he already had it. But he chose not to cling to his deity. Jesus' divine nature was not something he had to seek for or acquire, but he, it was already his. Somebody say yes. Yeah. But Jesus was willing to let go of the prerogatives of deity to become a man just like you and I. All right. Somebody said, yes. Yeah. 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 And then and then he said Jesus made himself of no reputation. Yes. He made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Yeah, I want you to know today that Jesus became like us mm. so that we could become like him. Somebody say, yeah. 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 The more common and well-known translation of this is that Jesus emptied himself. From the ancient Greek word empty, kenosis, came the idea that Jesus' incarnation was essentially a self emptying. 
we must carefully think about what Jesus emptied himself of. No deity was subtracted. Rather, humanity was added to his nature. Yeah. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Let me try to make it a, a little bit plainer. When, 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 when Jesus came into the world, he did not empty himself of being God. Right. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. But rather than emptying himself of being God, he added to himself the nature of a man. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he became like us so that we could become like him. Let this man be in you. Somebody say, yeah. That was also in Christ Jesus. Even as a king, by laying aside the tokens of his royalty and putting on the habit of a merchant, when all the while he ceases not to be a king or the highest in his own domain. And though, 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 he took on the form of a bond servant. Jesus did not empty himself of his deity or any of his attributes or his equality with God. He emptied himself in the form into the, the form of a bond servant, not merely the form of a man. And coming in the likeness of men, the, the further describe how Jesus emptied himself. We can think of someone who is a servant, but not in the likeness of men. Somebody said, tell me some more. Angels are servants, but not in the likeness of men. While Jesus did have the outward form of a humanity, the outward form reflected his true humanity, which was added to his deity. Yeah. Somebody said, yeah. yeah. I want you to know that Jesus was always God. And uh, he never stopped being God. But uh, in order, in order to help you and to help me, he took on my very nature. So then when you, when you walk around saying nobody understands me, no, you need to understand that everything about you, God understood it from the very beginning. Somebody ought to say, yeah. When you, when you start falling into your depression and start thinking that nobody cares and nobody knows what you are going through, right. I came by on this Sunday morning to remind you that everything that you've ever been through and everything that you ever go through, God knows all about it. But I want you to know you ought to let the man be in you. Can I get a witness? Yeah. There was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And in being formed in, in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself. Somebody say he humbled himself. And if you're going to have the mind of Jesus, you got to learn how to humble yourself. Don't be too bigoted. Act like you, you know everything. 
Act like you somebody. Act, act like, act like uh, you better than everybody else. Well, I want you to know that when you allow the, the, the mind of Jesus to be in you, you think more of other people than you think of yourself. Somebody say, yeah. 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 Jesus, Jesus humbled himself. He humbled himself. And he became obedient. This was something that Jesus could only experience by coming down from the throne of heaven and becoming a man. And when God sits in throne in heaven's glory, there is no one he has to obey. Somebody said, yeah. yeah. Jesus had to leave heaven's glory and be found in appearance as a man in order to become obedient. One key to uh, Jesus' obedience on earth was the endurance of suffering. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. This, again, was something he could only learn by uh, the experience after the incarnation. As it is written, it says, though he was a son uh, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Did you not know today the way that you become like Jesus is that you have to go through, somebody help me, some suffering. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. I know that you'd rather not have to deal with that mess over there. I'd rather not deal with some of these complicated people. I'd rather not deal with some of the people on my job. I, I'd rather not deal with my cousin and them. Yeah, but I, I came by on this Sunday morning to let you know that in order to become like Jesus, you got to go through some pain and suffering some turmoil, some misunderstanding, and, and downright degradation. But if you're going to be like Jesus, you got to go through some suffering. Somebody say, yeah, I'd rather not have to do it. But in order to be like Jesus, i got to go through some suffering. To be like Jesus, we must learn how to endure some suffering. It may not last but a week, and sometimes for a year, sometimes for years at a time. But after the suffering is over, you are more like Jesus than you've ever been before. Rather not go through all that mess, but on the other side of the mess, you are more like Jesus. Somebody say, yeah, more and more. And more like Jesus, you got to learn how to humble yourself. Somebody say, humble myself. Humble myself. He humbled himself and took on the form of a man, not an angel, but a man. He humbled himself when he was born in an obscure, oppressed place. They wanted to know. Can anything good come from that place? Yeah, I was, I was over there in uh, the Napier Projects the other day, and I was walking through the projects, and there was a young boy who, who, who grew up in the neighborhood, and now he's off in college, and somebody wanted to know, did he really grow up in Napier? Somebody said, yeah. I, I, I came by on this Sunday morning that Jesus grew up in a place like Napier in the projects where nobody thought any good come from. Jesus grew up in an oppressed place. He humbled himself. Somebody say he humbled himself. He humbled himself and he was born in poverty. Yeah, he humbled himself. 
and was born as a child, not a man. He humbled himself and submitted to the obedience of God. Somebody say he humbled himself and took on a trade as a carpenter and a builder. Somebody say he humbled himself. He humbled himself uh, the long wait before he launched his ministry. Yea, Lord, he humbled himself and, and, and uh, became a companion to fishermen and unlearned men. Sometimes we want to, all we want to do is hang around people who've been to school, right. have a degree. Uh -huh. But the fishermen, Peter, James, and John, they didn't have a degree. But Jesus picked them to become his disciples. You can learn from Jesus if you stay with Jesus. Somebody say, yeah. Just because you didn't go to Vanderbilt. Just because you didn't go to Harvard. Just because you didn't go to the Ivy League school. It's no reason for you not to learn from Jesus. Somebody say, yeah. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to treat people. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to save some money. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to make it in this world. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to walk with the Lord. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to live right. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to walk right. If I stay with Jesus, I learn how to die right. If I stay with Jesus, I've got to learn how to humble myself. Somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. He humbled himself in the weakness. He humbled himself in the hunger. He was thirsty. He got, in, he got tired, but he endured. He humbled himself to the obedience of his heavenly father. He humbled himself and submitted to the Holy Spirit. He humbled himself and submitted to death on the cross. He humbled himself for the agony of his death. He humbled himself with the shame and the mocking and the public humiliation. Somebody say, yeah. He humbled himself in enduring the spiritual agony of the sacrifice on the cross. He humbled himself, yet to surpass in greatness of our salvation. And why did he do it? He did it for you. He did it for me. Because crucifixion was the worst way to die. Crucifixion was a shameful death. Even the Roman soldiers didn't want to be crucified. They crucified him, but they didn't want to be crucified. Crucifixion is an ugly death. Even the Jews said it's a curse to be crucified. And when you're crucified, you're on the bottom rung of the ladder from the throne of God. But Jesus came all the way down to the most despised death of all, a condemned criminal on the accused cross. Even the death on the cross shows that he had no limits to what he would do to save your soul. His love and saving power for man. This was forever and the ultimate. We must sin. We must know that sin had to be paid for. And Jesus became a base. He became a base for you and I. Somebody say, yeah. He went to the lowest stoop to save us. He stooped for us. And every once in a while, we ought to stoop for him. Somebody say, yeah. He stooped to save your soul. The higher we ought to lift him up. And because he stooped for us, we ought to lift him up. Somebody says, lift the Savior up. He stooped for you. 
he stooped and he stooped. And when he reached the level of a man, he kept on stooping. Yeah, he kept on stooping. He stooped so that he could save your soul. Somehow say, yeah. yeah. I came by on the Sunday morning to let you know that when you stoop for God, God will lift you up. I know you don't want to do that, that old ugly job, getting your hands dirty. But every once in a while, you got to stoop. Somebody says, stoop for Jesus. Stoop for Jesus. If you stoop for Jesus, he will stoop for you and save your soul. Somebody say, yeah. But after he stooped for you, the word said that therefore God gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, somebody say, yeah, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is. I came by on the Sunday morning to talk about a little knee bending and a little confession of the mouth. I came by on the Sunday morning to let you know that there got to be some confessing with the tongue and some knee bowing. Somebody say, yeah. Some knee bowing and confessing with the mouth. Somebody say, yeah. I don't know about you. I don't mind some confessing with my mouth and bowing with my knees. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. You got to learn how to bow and confess the Lord. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. If you confess with your mouth, believe in Jesus. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. I came back to let you know that before it's all over, before it's all said and done, every Somebody say every, every, every knee must bow and every tongue will confess. Somebody say, yeah, I don't care what your level is. One day, Trump is going to have to confess. Somebody say, yeah, one day, Putin will confess. Yeah. If you will, either you will confess, go to heaven, or confess, and go to that other place. Somebody say, yeah. One way or the other, you will confess that Jesus is Lord. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. This is to suggest that if God is for you, no one can be against you. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. What God has for me, it is for me. Somebody say, yeah. I got to close right here by letting you know that when Jesus came to earth, he went back to heaven. He went back with something that he didn't have before. He went back to heaven with something that he didn't have when he came to the earth. Somebody said, tell me some more. He went back to heaven with something that he didn't have before he came to earth. Somebody say, yeah. Somebody said, what did he take that he didn't have when he came? He took you. He took me. He took your sins. He took your sins. He took my sins. Somebody else say, yeah. He took you, he took me, and yeah, and then he left something that he had not been before. He left his spirit so that his spirit could be right here to walk with me, talk with me everywhere I go. His spirit is in my mind. His spirit is in my soul. He took me to heaven, yeah. He took me there, and he left his spirit 
so that my soul, every time I go through something that's hard for me to get through, he reminds me that he saved my soul. Somebody ought to say, yeah. I, 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 I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that he saved my soul. And I don't mind stooping for Jesus. Somebody ought to say, yeah. He walks with me, talks with me everywhere I go. That's why I don't mind doing all I can while I can. Somebody ought to say, yeah, I'm going to walk with him, talk with him. Yes, I will get tired sometimes, but I'm going to stay on the journey. Somebody say, yeah, weep sometimes, stay on the journey. Confuse sometimes, but stay on the journey. Glide on, stay on the journey. Talked about, stay on the journey. Walked on, stay on the journey. Lied on, but I'm going to stay on the journey. Misunderstood, but I'm going to stay on the journey. Lied on, talked about, walked on, run on. But I'm going to stay, I'm going to run on to see what the end's going to be. Somebody else say, yeah, yeah, yeah. a song that Clay Evans used to sing. Yeah. He said, whenever the devil try to get you down, tell him he can't walk in front of you. Tell him he can't walk on the side of you. Tell him that he can't walk behind you. But you got to tell him he got to walk under your feet. Tell him to walk under your feet. Walk on him. Ha. He said, when life gets you down, things not going well, he said, sing this song every once in a while. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Anyhow, oh yes, oh yeah, just tell the word, hallelujah, anyhow, uh, yeah, when Dave the devil tried to stop you, try to bring you down, just sing the song, oh hallelujah. Anyhow, come on, y'all. Oh, hallelujah. Anyhow. Don't, don't you let the devil get you down. Oh, when the devil blocks your way. Stand right there and say, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, anyhow, come on, y'all, oh, hallelujah, anyhow, I'm singing it right now, hey, hallelujah, anyhow. When the devil blocks your way, stand right there and say, hey, hallelujah. 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 Anyhow, come on, y'all. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Anyhow. Oh, 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 hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Anyhow, hey, when the devil blocks your way, stand right there and say, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyhow, that is hallelujah. Anyhow. When the devil, when the devil blocks your way, stand right there and say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! One more time. Hallelujah! Anyhow. When the devil blocks your way, stand right there. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door is open. I extend to you an invitation. I extend to you an invitation. What a beautiful sight. The mother on this side. Daughter on this side. Come on, y'all. I like that. The door is open. Come on. The door is open. The door is open. Let the man be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. These men are singing, aren't they? Come on, let's give God some praise. <laughs> you know, I tell my wife, as I'm going, as I'm going to choir practice. <laughs> I'm so proud to be in the male chorus. 
I'm so proud. Lord, I tell us, I'm going, I'm going over here and practice with the men. I remember, it's not just the singing. It's not just the singing. I remember when Dave Neal and Alpha Locke I remember Sidney Hodges. I remember Roger Collier, John Collier, Moselle. I remember them. And it, it, and it, and it wasn't about the singing. Raymond Giles, <laughs> Henry J. Robert Allen. Now, no one, no one was going to put us on a record label. Okay. No one was, no one came in to sign us up. It was the, it was the camaraderie. So, so, so when I tell my wife, I said, I'm leaving home. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to sing and practice with the male chorus. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you sound. It doesn't matter if you have the best voice in the house. It doesn't matter. What really matters is that you're giving your very best to God. And when you give your very best to God, I don't know how it works out, but God takes it and uses it in his own way. Lord, whatever, somebody help me here. Whatever you're doing in this season, remember me. I pray God's blessings upon all of you today. I pray God's blessings upon all of you. In the name. Amen. Will you stand for the doxology? My wife is trying to get it. Bring it to me. Praise God from whom all Let me, let me say this before we leave. Somebody say, somebody repeat after me. Patsy Petway. She is so faithful to make sure that we have palms. She goes out of her way. I mean, this is a big deal for her. Every Palm Sunday, she goes out of her way. I don't even know how much money she spends. She won't tell me. She doesn't want to be reimbursed. She just want to make sure that every Palm Sunday we have palms yeah. on the floor to rem remind us that Jesus came into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Thank you, Patsy. Thank you, Patsy. Somebody say, thank you, Patsy. Thank you, Patsy. You can't do what I can do but you can do what you can do. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Don't even try to do what I can do, but you do the best of what you can do. Now I want everybody to take a palm with you. Take a palm with you on your way out the door. Take them home and, rem and remind yourself, you can take more than one. Let's make sure we all get them all off the floor. Take them home. Now, 
unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all end by saying, come on. Oh, everybody. Oh. Now turn and elbow bump, fist bump, hug seven people before you leave. I'm counting. Seven. Seven. Elbow.